It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. This is another edition of Frontline Friday with my regular and special guest, Bridget Gleason. Bridget, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Good morning, Andy. Did you get your run in this morning? I did. I, I, I have a very difficult time starting my day without a run. So, so it means early, early mornings, a 4 to 4.30 a.m. wake up, and, but I get my run in. Okay. Hopefully you're well illuminated when you're running out on the streets in the dark. Yeah, illuminated enough. <laughs> <laughs> illuminated, schmuminated. That's right. <laughs> I stay on the sidewalks, the car. You're not running in the streets, right? Well, I am running in the streets, but not many people are out at that time. Okay, just you and the coyotes. And they've got got lights. Cars have lights. So I'm good. I'm golden. I'm going to buy you a vest for your next birthday. (sighs) Okay, good idea. There you go. All right, so today, I thought what we'd talk about is, because we spent a lot of time talking about sales training and sales education and how reps should stay abreast of the latest trends and, and how reading is so important. I thought... Maybe it'd be great to talk about some of the sales and marketing books we've read recently, or business books even, or not even business books, good books in general that we've read that that we think would be great for people in, in sales to read. Okay, well, as you and I've talked ab- about before, I- I- I'm an obsessive reader. And in fact, the, my team gives me a hard time because one of the things that I do when I run in the morning is I listen to books on tape, or I say books on tape, that so dates me. Um, you got your Walkman, your walk- Sony Walkman. People don't know what we're talking about when we say a Walkman, where you put in a cassette tape and you'd listen. Okay, that's so old and dated, but I listen to books on Audible. Mm-hmm. Um, and people don't understand how I can get motivated and uh, uh, pumped when I'm running, but I get so, and I typically listen to Business books, sales books, um, some, uh, I'll call them personal development for lack of a better Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. term. You know, how to keep an inner calm when everything around you is uh, swirling out of control, (laughs) which happens in sales. I've got got a book like that on my list. I'm going to talk about Okay, good. So I that's when I that's when I listen. So I always have I always have ones that I. that I'm, I've read recently that I like that. So I'm happy to talk about that. Okay. And if there are right. any that you think of, uh, any that you think of, otherwise I'm I'm happy to talk about some. Well, let's let's start I've with been. your your most recent one. Then we'll jump onto some of mine. Okay, so my most recent one was actually recommended to me by my. Uh, I have an executive coach, mm-hmm. which I highly recommend to anyone and everyone. And she recommended this book called People Styles at Work. And it's basically, it's not a, it's not a personality assessment, um, but it's rather that we cut, there are four basic st- work styles that people present. And in the U.S., we're pretty evenly distributed amongst the four different different styles. And because we're pretty evenly distributed, it's, it's helpful to know and to remember that 75% of the people you interact with are going to be different than you. Mm -hmm. And so just how do we, how do we interact with one another? Um, just more productively and the four styles. And I don't know, I mean, Andy, you and I've talked about different personality, uh, tests and assessment Mm -hmm, styles, mm -hmm, and there's all kinds of different ones, but the, the four that they talk about in this book are uh, the analytical, the driver, mm-hmm. the expressive, mm-hmm. and the amiable. And they're pretty self they're pretty self explanatory. I mean, if you think if you think about the four of them, but it's it's also learning how to they call it flex flex to a different style when you're when you're interacting when you're interacting with somebody else. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, they, 
as you said, lots of personality tests out there. I mean, there's the whole uh, disc assessment, I guess, you know, dominance, influence, steadiness, compliance, uh, all these personality types. So was there one big takeaway for you from the book that sort of, you know, sort of aha? Well, for me, it was um, one of the big things is when we're, so I'm an expressive and basically an expressive is assertive. So I'm, I'm like a driver. A driver is also very assertive. So I'm very assertive, but I'm also responsive, meaning that there's a, there's a people element that's really important to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So one of the big ahas, though, for me was when an expressive gets triggered, so whatever it is that, that I'm, I'm not getting my point across or I have some, I'm having difficulty in, in a situation, my, my backup style, I move to, I get angry. And that's so true for me. Hmm. I get angry. And what happens then is that then triggers is the backup styles for everybody else. And you just see how issues can escalate. And it doesn't take more than a person in the room who, if, if that individual can stay sort of grounded and centered and aware of the dynamics that can, can help prevent a conversation or interaction from going off the rails. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that was, that was interesting to me that I don't need everybody in the room to be grounded and aware. And I certainly am not going to always be aware but that if I if I recognize God, I'm I'm I'm, I'm I feel myself getting angry because that's an easy emotion for me to recognize. It means I'm triggered, and I let me take a step back. And the place I need to go is into a more analytical mode. Right, right. I mean, without getting kind of too too into it. So the other thing that's interesting about it, Andy, is with my managers. We've all we've all talked about it, and we've taken the assessments, and we've self identified and identified who we are in the group, and it's it's given us each of us a really good framework for giving feedback to one another. That sometimes hard feedback, right? And one of my managers, who's definitely a driver and does not have a lot of emotional uh, awareness. I bought him uh, a Gumby that he has sitting on his desk <laughs> as a reminder to flex. Okay, this is a situation where you need to flex a little. Right. Ask me how I'm doing. Let, and it's just given us a nice way to be able to talk about it where people don't feel threatened. The, the thing that they make very clear in the book is that there's not one style that's better than another or more successful than another, or that you should strive for. It's just being aware of what your style is, as well as the styles of other people in the room. Right, right. Okay, excellent. Great, great suggestion. The author of that book was, or is? Uh, the author of this book is uh, Robert, uh, Robert and Dorothy Bolton, so two co-authors. And the title again, just to remind people. Uh, people's Styles at Work. And it, the subtitle is Making Bad Relationships Good and Good Relationships Better. And this is all for t t just the work situation. Okay. Very cool. Very okay. Cool. I'd love to hear one of yours because there's maybe one that I don't know about that I can start listening to or reading or bring up with my team. Well, several. So, so one that I really enjoyed, and it's a book that's been out for a while. It's called The Go-Giver. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've ever read it, a little, uh, subtitle, A Little Story About a Powerful Business Idea. Uh, author is Bob Berg, B-U-R-G. Mm. And it's a parable laid out about, um, you know, what he called those five, strat five, five laws of stratospheric success. Mm. Um, but really oriented around sort of saying that, you know, how much you're worth is is really determined by how, how much more you give in value than what you take in payment, basically. I mean, that's sort of one of the laws, but it's the one that really sort of, I think, frames a lot of the, the book, is it's, you know, how you serve people mm. is really going to dictate, ultimately, you know, what you receive in return, uh, 
And, you know, it's just sort of a simple concept that, you know, we talk about in sales a lot in terms of being of service to other people, but it's one that really brings it home in a very succinct way. And uh, like I said, there's sort of five laws of, of success. One is, you know, the law of value. And as I just said, your worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Um, you know, you, they have a little, one called the law of influence. You know, your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. And so you think about, you know, when you're talking with customers, you know, if you're always um, thinking about what's next and what's in it for you as opposed to what ultimately they're going to get out of it, yeah, you're going to have a hard time succeeding to the extent that you want. And so it wraps up a lot of really interesting common sense thought about being other-oriented and service-oriented in you know, a business that you know, we find that you and I have found a lot, that you know, a lot of people in and a lot of sales reps and so on have a hard time putting the interest of the customer first in a very authentic and sincere way. And this, uh, I think, gives a framework for people to do that. Yeah, it's great. We, we talk a lot at Sumo Logic about playing for, you're playing for the front of the jersey, not the back of the jersey. You know, you're playing for the team as mm-hmm. opposed to, you know, your, your own name on the back of the jersey. And it's, it's sometimes, Andy, just so antithetical to what the traditional sales persona is. You know, you hear about salespeople being coin operated and it's all about me and all they want to do is make money. And it's very me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. And what you're describing, and it sounds like Bob Berg is describing in his book, The Go-Giver, is the opposite of that. Yeah. It's, 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 it's giving, not getting. And how have you found that salespeople respond to that, to that message and that concept? Well, I think that what, what I'm finding, and when I tell people about it, and I actually have recommended this book to clients to read and included on a reading list I provide to clients to have as part of their sales education curriculum is that people gravitate to it because it's, it's uh, you know, people feel like they're struggling, right? We're out there in a really competitive world and it's hard to, you know, get in the door and talk to the customer and they're, they're being flooded with, you know, inquiries from, you know, tons of other sales reps. And it suddenly says, well, maybe this is a way I can really set myself apart. And so it, it gets people thinking. And I think that's really what you want, is you want, I want to be able to stimulate thoughts that perhaps there's a different path that we can all follow, a path that's our own, but that incorporates more of the elements of service as opposed to uh, sort of traditional uh, sales methodology or sales ethos, if you will, of sort of imposing myself on a, on a customer. Yeah, it's, I, I really like that, Andy. I'm looking forward to reading it. I, I think also... Prospects and customers and those around you, they pick up on, they pick up on that. So it's, it's, it's not only perhaps what a sales rep does, but it's the attitude by which they're approaching their job and a situation and an interaction that I think people pick up on. And it's much more attractive and interesting to work with somebody that has that uh, mentality and framework than it is the person that's always, you know, me, 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 what's in it for me? How quickly can I close this deal? How much can I get? How am I going to win? I think there's just a lot more, a lot more in there that's attractive for the uh, prospect and customer as well. Yeah. And you have to practice it because you know, one of the laws in the book is the law of authenticity. I mean, this has to be something mm. you has to be something you feel sincerely. Other people pick up on insincerity. Your buyers pick up on insincerity really quickly, and you know it's part of the reason that salespeople there's sort of the stereotyped image of a you know glad handing, hey, how you doing type type salesperson. And so they'll get it if you're not really sincere about this. So you have well, to practice it. It may not. It's going to be hard for people that come from the other other perspective. But when you really start making it all about the customer and what they're trying to achieve, it's amazing how easy it starts to become. Well, I think, and I think that's a good point, Andy. If if somebody's doing it just because, hey, this is a way for me to get more, I can't imagine it would work. 
yeah. as you point out, the authenticity is important. There was a conference I spoke at, gosh, it, it, it was maybe a, a year and a half or so ago. I spoke at the conference and then I must have been, I, I must have been close to the front when I was listening to um, some other speakers and then in conversations at breaks and things. And one, there was a CEO there who was also a speaker and we had a, we had a friend in common and this friend said to me after that he had come up to her and said, gosh, I was, you know, interacting with Bridget and I just observe her and she just gives, she, she really cares. She seems like she, she seems like she really cares about the people she's talking to. She listens so intently how can I, uh, what did he say? How can I learn how to act that way? Like I, he wanted to be able to do it. Not, he says, I want to, I, I want to, I want to be able to do that. Not because I feel it, but like, how do I pretend that I care like that? <laughs> and she laughed and said, it's not going to work if you are just trying to put on an act like you're really listening. No. Um, so I, your, your story and the, the, the point about authenticity really rings true that it, it can't be something that you just, you, you put on like a mask and then, okay, that was good. And then I'm going to go back to, um, eh, indifference or it's right. all about me again. Right. Right. Um, you got another one on your list or you want me to throw another one out? Uh, well, I'll bring up another one that I've, I really have enjoyed. I've read it more than once. Wow. It's, it's a book. Maybe I'm just slow, Andy. I read a lot of them more than once. I, I, you know, they're, they're, they're relevant <laughs> at, at different points in time. So this one is a book by Bill Walsh. Many of you or some of you may out there may know Bill Walsh as the legendary 49ers coach. And he wrote a book called The Score Takes Care of Itself. And it's his philosophy on leadership. Hmm. And God, I love this book. And even the title itself is, and you and I've talked about this book mm -hmm. a little bit. Even the title itself really resonates with me that it's this, it's this process that produces results. And if you focus on the process, and he really talks about the standard of performance and expect if you focus on the standards of performance and excellence and those types of things, that's what's going to lead to the results. And just that's where your focus needs to be, not just in the results themselves. Yeah, I, I always I agree 100%. I, I haven't read that book, but it just got written down on my list to, to purchase and so I'm a huge Bill Walsh fan. Um, you yeah, know, that that. So often, you know, you see with managers as trying to manage outcomes rather than the process. And you can't manage outcomes. You know, outcomes yeah. are what happened as a result of your process. So manage the inputs into your process, manage the steps of your process. And as he said, as I presume in the book, is that, yeah, the score takes care of itself at that point. Well, and he, he was obsessive, Andy, about the little things, the, sta the standards of performance. Mm -hmm. The repetition and doing each each step along the way with excellence and really paying attention to the detail. And sometimes I think that's that's an art that is somewhat maybe lost today. Like, and and I don't want to say this is just this is just millennials or really let's 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 say instead of it's talking about millennials, just this culture of instant gratification mm -hmm. and, you know, video games getting to the next step quickly. We're so eager to get to the next step and to the next promotion, to the next job, to the next, that sometimes I think we miss the deep learning and the excellence in each of the steps that, that, that actually we're in, we're in right now. And right. I, I just in as I read his book and was so gosh I admired his attention to detail and how 
each of that, it, it just excellence along each step and how that really led to success for him and his team, it's, it's something that I continually need to revisit because it's easy to, to be vigilant and then you slack off and get busy that I, I, I find for me, I need to continually remind myself this is something that's important and it needs to be paid attention to. Yeah, I think it sounds like one of the, the real lessons there is that success is intentional. It's, it's deliberate. Yeah. Right, it's it's not going through the motions, but it's as he said, you know, it's the the excellence at every each level, and that requires, as I said, being very deliberate. I mean, that's one thing I wrote about extensively, as you know, in my second book, Amp Up Your Sales, is that, and I hadn't read Walsh's book, but you know, sort of similar philosophy is that, you know, every time you have the opportunity as a salesperson to interact with a prospect, it has to be thoughtful and deliberate and mindful there has to be a plan what it is you're going to accomplish you just can't do things robotically or in remote control yeah that's that's exactly right another uh line that he has in the book which i also just loved was winners act like winners before they are mm. and I, and i like that which which going back to what you're saying is you if you start doing the things that winners do the results will come. The score will take care of itself. You will end up winning, but you got to do the, the action precedes the success. Yeah. And so the, the things that you're doing, that's going to, that's, what's going to make you a winner before the results even come in that you are a winner. Yeah. I always remember someone along those lines uh, talking to one of my early managers when I was sort of hoping to be promoted to my first job out of sales into management. And I said, well, how do you, how do you know, you know, when someone's ready? And his answer was, well, when they're doing the job. Right. And, you know, for people that are thinking and listening to the show and say, well, Jess, I'm really angling for this next promotion as well. What are you doing to demonstrate, you know, the, the excellence and the forethought and the intentional actions of being ready for that next job? Yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up. We talk a lot about that here also at, at Sumo Logic is people that are looking for promotions or to get to that next step, it's helping them understand. Sometimes they don't know what the pieces of the job are that they need to practice doing before they're even ready for that job. So I find that when a rep, let's say, wants to go to be a manager, that Oftentimes they think it's, well, I, I help people on deals already. I'm already doing the job. And sometimes I need to help spell out, well, there's a lot, there's a, a several different pieces of being a manager mm -hmm. um, that would be good for you to, to practice and demonstrate before taking on, or actually even before I would consider you for that role. Right. Excellent. Okay. Bill Walsh, book on the list. Okay. Next for you. Well, this is a little bit different one, but it's it. I think it's very relevant for sales reps to read, and it's called "Selling Your Story in Sixty Seconds." Wow, that's and another good one. Written by a gentleman named Michael Hage, H A U G E, and or Haig, excuse me. And um, actually, I interviewed him for the show. The episode will air here, uh, probably after this one does, and. So he's a he's a master storyteller. He's a story expert. He's a Hollywood person. I mean, he's helped consult on lots with screenwriters and producers and directors. Um, and so he understands this whole thing about he sort of starts talking about how you sell your story in sort of the context of, you know, if you've written a script or a, an idea that you're trying to sell to studios. But the lessons that came across were were really pretty striking in terms of the, how they translate into the experience for, for sales reps. So, you know, you talked about the power of first impressions. He's talking, you know, when you go into a pitch meeting, you say you're a screenwriter and you've got a story that you're trying to pitch to a movie studio, is that, you know, this you're meeting this room of people, you have basically 60 seconds to capture their attention and to, um, you know, get them to commit more time to learn more about what you're doing. And so the power of first impressions, uh, mm. really important. He talks about that. Um, but really one of the keys was, as he talked about when 
when you're in that environment, this thing I thought that really interesting, it translates into, into selling so much is, is he said, you know, when you're pitching that story, you don't tell the story. You talk about your story. You know, you paint the picture about the story, but not tell the story itself. So what you're doing is you're dealing with the emotional side, which is what stories do, right? It's capture the emotional side of people's brain as opposed to the logical side, is you tell a story about about your story. I think that's, you know, I think about that from a sales context is, you know, you don't want to go in and talk about your product. You want to tell a story about the product. You know, you want to engage the emotions of the listeners. And so that's why we, a lot of time we talk about the importance of being able to tell effective stories about how people similar to your prospect have purchased your product, the process they went through, the pain they felt, the pain you solved, and what the, the, uh, great outcome was from having used your product or service. And so that's, that's, you know, what we talked about, I thought was really compelling is that from a mindset is for salespeople, is don't tell your story, tell a story about your story. I cannot wait to read that. I, I think this one is so relevant. It, it, it's relevant for salespeople, but it's relevant for Got just any any business person. I I get asked frequently um, some companies that I advise when they're trying to raise money or they're trying to get to see a particular investor. Or they're trying to break into a new market. This is it. This is so relevant. Yeah, yeah. And so, so that was a. It's an excellent book. People should read that. Uh, there's another book out about storytelling that's also good that just uh, was recently released called uh, Sell with a Story, written by a gentleman mm. named Paul Smith. Mm. And it's sort of the third in a series of books he's written about storytelling. first one was called Lead with a Story, about how leaders use story. Uh, he wrote Parenting with a Story, about how parent, to become a better parent with a story. Mm. And then the third book he's written about this is Sell with a Story. And very clearly lays out what the components of a good story are is that you should or are i guess that you should incorporate when you build a story to tell to prospects and um you know gives examples of good stories who is the author well, on that one paul smith okay i i'm looking them up right now because i'm i'm going to buy these i, I need more things that i can uh listen to when i'm out there running in the pitch black <laughs> in the pitch black Avoid running running away from the coyotes books. Avoiding cars. And mountain lions. And mountain lions. Not as many of those, but. So those are those are my suggestions. Do you have one more quick one we can give people before we end this particular episode? Well, I, I get, this is one that I've talked also a lot about. We probably don't have time to go into it. But uh, Winner's Dream by Bill, Bill McDermott is another fantastic book on leadership and sales. And for people who don't know who Bill McDermott is, he's the CEO of SAP. Mm -hmm. And it chronicles his life of wanting to get in sales very early at Xerox. So we've got a common uh, company back there. So I know the Xerox culture very well. And just his optimism and attitude and can do uh, spirit, and it, it's it's a, just a fantastic, really uplifting, motivating story about sales and leadership, and sort of his path, as he calls it, from corner store when he worked in a deli mm -hmm. growing up to uh, being the CEO of SAP. Just a fantastic, fantastic read. Okay, good. Well. That sort of covers it for today. We'll come back and do another episode about books because there's a long list of things that uh, of books, excuse me, that that we could talk about that uh, I've read recently that I think everybody should be reading. So we'll have another episode. But in the meantime, Bridget, thanks as always. And likewise, have a great uh, rest of the week, Andy. Thank you, and thank you, friends, for listening. Remember, make accelerate a part of your day every day. Help you uh, accelerate your business success. And we appreciate you listening. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guest, visit my website at andypaul.com.